So how can emotional intelligence provide your organization a competitive advantage? While it may sound nerve wracking, focusing on emotions in the workplace can be illuminating. From a business perspective, understanding attitudes and behavior is necessary since it's your people that create your organization's competitive advantage. And when you start treating and caring for people as people and not just task completers, it's amazing what they can accomplish. With the great resignation and a widespread shift to remote and hybrid working, or even just simply facing uniquely challenging times, leaders need to take a holistic look at how work factors into people's lives rather than expecting them to shape their lives for work. And inclusion and diversity in the workplace requires openness to, understanding of, and compassion and accommodation for people's needs and lifestyles beyond one's own life experience. Remember, you are not the standard to which everything is judged. In today's climate, the hunt for talent is in high demand, and unless you're treating your people as people and caring about their specific needs, whether that's how they want to work, the hours they want to work, or where they want to work, it's important that you listen. I always ask my employees three big questions. What do you need to feel connected to me and the team? What do you need to feel appreciated for your efforts? And what do you need to feel fulfilled in your role? And then I shut up and listen. That tells me how to lead them. If employees feel connected to, appreciated for, and fulfilled in their roles, it's going to affect how they feel and perform at work. How they feel affects how they perform. And understanding what your people's inner iceberg is and what makes them tick, that's the key to leading an emotionally intelligent workplace. And unless you have emotional intelligence, this is hard to achieve. The answer is in our universal language, emotions.